It's been nine years since 9-11, and we are just now starting to put all the pieces back together. Now, all these conspiracy theorists who have been saying for years that it was an inside job, I simply ask them that if it was an inside job, then who were the people inside that made it all happen? Well, it's about time that someone has stepped up to the plate and started naming names. In the past week, some explosive new evidence has come forward. The Center for International 9-11 Studies recently released a series of never-before-seen videos which they acquired through a Freedom of Information Act and lawsuit which forced the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, to release three terabytes of data that they compiled during their three-year investigation. Even then, a few of the videos are cut and have certain parts edited out. Nonetheless, this channel has set a record for 9-11 related channels on YouTube for views and new subscriptions. Also, this week we saw two new articles released exposing the inside connections and naming names for all the key people who had all the right connections and could have pulled off the entire 9-11 operation from the inside. Please note that this research is only in its early stages, so there may be a few mistakes. However, it appears to be rich, fertile soil for anyone who wants to do some digging. This is not the final smoking gun. More like a bloody glove the murderer will claim doesn't fit. I hope to see some extensive research into the leads uncovered in both of these articles recently released on 911blogger.com. Jonathan Cole's Explosive Connections and Kevin Ryan's History of Wirt Dexter Walker, Russell and Company, the CIA, and 9-11. World Trade Center security company Stratasec has been a topic of considerable discussion among independent 9-11 investigators. One point of discussion has been the possible familial relations between Stratasec CEO, or Dexter Walker III, and its director, Marvin Bush, whose brother George was President of the United States on 9-11. Although Wirt and Marvin are both distant relatives, these ties are inconsequential relative to each man's family connections to old drug money, deep state operatives, and the wealthy, powerful, rich people who have controlled such money and operations over the last two centuries. Stratasec was a company that provided security services for several facilities that were central to the crimes of 9-11. In the years leading up to 9-11, the company had security contracts with the organization that managed Dulles Airport, where Flight 77 took off that day, and with United Airlines, which owned two of the other three hijacked airplanes. Stratasec had also run security for Los Alamos National Laboratories, where, at the time, scientists were developing super thermite explosives of the type that had been found in the World Trade Center dust. Stratasec worked at the World Trade Center and was developing the security system for the buildings in the period leading up to and including the day of 9-11. These connections are important considering the substantial evidence that insiders were involved in the 9-11 attacks. Investigation into this company has revealed that the chief operating officer, Barry McDaniel, came to Stratasec from a subsidiary of the Carlyle Group called BDM International, which specialized in black projects. The Carlyle Group was managed by several Bush cabal insiders, including James Baker and former Deputy Director of the CIA, Frank Carlucci. Carlyle was funded by investors that included the Bin Laden family. Prior to working for BDM, McDaniel had worked as a military ordnance distributor at Fort Belvoir, a facility with many links to 9-11, including the terrorist tracking program Able Danger and the terrorist trainer Ali Muhammad. McDaniel was not the only former Carlyle Group employee at Stratasec, as the company's Director of Information Technology was also formerly with BDM. Additionally, the Vice President of Finance at Stratasec came there from Anadak Molybdenum Corporation, a company where the Chairman, Roger Taylor, was the President of Zapata Granby, a subsidiary of Zapata Corporation. This is the same Zapata Corporation that was founded by George H.W. Bush in the 1950s. George H.W. Bush's son, Marvin, was the director of Stratasec from 1993 to 2000. Probably the most interesting person associated with Stratasec was Wirt Dexter Walker III, despite the three, where it is actually the fourth Wirt Dexter Walker in the same line. To keep my references clear, however, in this video, we will refer to the Stratasec CEO, Wirt Dexter Walker III, as Wirt III. Given the remarkable connections between Wirt III and the facilities and aircraft compromised on 9-11, a review of all the Wirts and where they came from is worthwhile. 
so I suggest checking the links in the description if you would like a more detailed history lesson. Wirt III's grandfather, Wirt I, like his grandfather Wirt Zero, was a member of the Chicago Club, which was, since its inception in 1869, a highly selective and secretive group of Chicago power brokers. In fact, the Chicago Tribune dubbed it the center of power in Chicago. Wirt I appears to simply have been a lucky rich kid amongst a membership list that at one time or another included the likes of Marshall Field, George Pullman, and Abraham Lincoln. But perhaps there was more to Wirt than we know. Immediately after his divorce from Mildred in April 1949, Wirt I married Rosalie Cohen, former model and secretary. Rosalie was 20 years younger than Wirt. Wirt I died on August 8, 1953, the week of the CIA's famous coup in Iran. His obituary lists private service and no report of how he died. Wirt Dexter Walker II, Wirt II, was born to Wirt I and his first wife, Susan Kramer Stevenson, during the two years that they lived in Buffalo. Like his father, Wirt II went to Williams College. He graduated and then immediately joined the Army Air Corps during World War II and became a pilot. Just before leaving for duty in 1942, Wirt II married Margaret Elizabeth Ross of North Adams. And they eventually had three children, Wirt Dexter Walker III, Wirt III, Wendy Margaret Walker, and William Ross Walker. Both Wendy and William, along with their brother Wirt III, were shareholders in Stratasec. In 1954, Wirt II was in a legal battle with three of his father's four wives over his father's substantial estate. His daughter Wendy later remarked on Wirt I's exploits, suggesting that her grandfather's work at Arcady Farms was only one of several of his ventures. Wirt II became a career officer in the Army Air Corps and then the U.S. Air Force, serving until 1962. He flew combat missions with the 8th Air Force while stationed in England during the war and was later stationed in Germany. After the war, he was assigned to various government agencies involved in reconnaissance intelligence. The Lockheed made U-2 reconnaissance aircraft was assigned to the 8th Air Force, a part of the Strategic Air Command, where U-2 operations started in 1956 and involved flights over the Soviet Union and the Middle East. In May 1960, while Wirt II was working on reconnaissance intelligence, an American U-2 was shot down by the Soviets, initiating a worldwide controversy over espionage. Wirt II is also listed as an ex-employee of the National Photographic Interpretation Center, NPIC, an agency of the CIA that analyzed aerial spy photographs. The significance of the NPIC to major intelligence activities during the 20th century cannot be overstated. NPIC was the agency that was responsible for the intelligence that originated the Cuban Missile Crisis. NPIC was also central to the analysis of the photographic evidence related to the Kennedy assassination, including the Zapruder film. Whether or not Wirt II participated in these historic activities is not publicly known. In his obituary, Wirt II is listed as having been an employee of the Defense Intelligence Agency, for which it is said that he worked until 1977. He died of leukemia in 1997. Wirt III lives in McLean, Virginia, home of the CIA. He graduated from Lafayette College in 1968, and in 1961 he married Sally Gregg White, a Washington, D.C. debutante. Wirt was fortunate to land a position right out of college as a broker for an investment firm called Glor Forgan, originally a company called Field Glor. Financed by Marshall Field III, Glor Forgan was renamed in 1937 for its new partner, James Russ Forgan. Russ was one of the most influential men in the history of U.S. intelligence, having led the European Division of the CIA's predecessor organization, the Office of Strategic Services. In the OSS, Forgan focused on infiltrating the German intelligence apparatus with the help of William J. Casey. Casey later became SEC chairman under Nixon and the director of CIA under Reagan. Before going back to work in the investment business, Forgan helped to write the documents that created the CIA. While Wirt III worked there, William Casey was house counsel for Glor Forgan. It was at this time that the firm was at the center of a near collapse of Wall Street. In 1970, it began to be clear that Glor Forgan had somehow sold many millions of dollars more in securities than what its customers thought they owed. As a result, the company was expected to fail, and due to a cascading effect, its failure was projected to take down dozens of other firms, causing a panic and huge losses on Wall Street. 
These projections compelled President Nixon to ask Ross Perot through Treasury Secretary John Connolly to intervene and save Chlorforgan. Perot suffered dramatic losses in an attempt to save the company, the only business loss of his career, and Chlorforgan went bankrupt anyway. The U.S. government created the Securities Investor Protection Corporation, SIPC, in response. A few years later, Wirt III went from being a broker at Glorforgan to running a series of other companies that went bankrupt, yet somehow Wirt III always had cash flow. That could have been due to the fact that by 1982, Wirt III was a director of the Kuwaiti American Company, or KUAM. Stratasec started off in 1987 as Burns & Rowe Securicom, founded by Nelson Rockefeller's assistant, Sebastian Cassetta. The company changed its name to Securicom when it was taken over by Kuam in 1992, at which time Wirt III became CEO. When Wirt III was sued by the president of an existing company with an identical name, Wirt became abusive and told the other businessmen that he would bury him financially and take everything he had by filing a barrage of frivolous arguments in multiple jurisdictions. Wirt lost the case and had to change his company's name to Stratasec. But this incident suggested that Wirt III was not only abusive, but that he had the kind of deep pockets that allowed for frivolous lawsuits. Kuam also owned two companies called Commander Aircraft and Aviation General, both of which had Wirt III as CEO, and both of which went bankrupt shortly after 9-11. As CEO of Stratasec, Wirt III did business with some shady characters. For example, Stratasec owed money to a company called Bankist Capital, which appeared to be a money laundering operation or similar fraud. Wirt III transferred several million dollars in shares of his Stratasec stock to Bankest as a way to reduce that debt. Bankist's owners, brother Eduardo and Hector Orlansky, were later convicted of conspiracy and bank fraud when $185 million went missing due to huge over-advances. Apparently, $2 billion was flowed through the Orlansky's two businesses from 1998 to 2003 to create the appearance that they were healthy and growing. A company called Hannafin Imhoff was the underwriter for Wirt's company, Commander Aircraft. This gives further evidence that the companies Wirt III was running were not only bound for bankruptcy, but were probably CIA fronts all along. Hannafin Imhoff was nailed for correspondence fraud in December of 2000. In any case, Wirt III has a tendency to show up when airplanes crash into tall buildings. The only other such occurrence since 9-11 led to Wirt III being interviewed because the plane that crashed was related to his company, Aviation General. The conclusion is that it appears that Wirt III manages CIA front companies and that Stratasec was one of them. There are many ways to see this, including Wirt's shady business dealings and his tendency to run companies into bankruptcy while still maintaining cash flow. Wirt is, at a minimum, a child of the CIA and the DIA, but he also worked with William Casey for Russ Forgan's company, making him an associate of some of the most influential deep state operatives of the last 60 years. Wirt's family has been connected to drug money and Yale secret societies for over 150 years, and these connections include many links to the Bush family. Of course, George H.W. Bush was a CIA director and other Bush family members were operatives. Add to this the fact that the COO of Stratasec, Barry McDaniel, came from a subsidiary of the Carlyle Group that conducted black projects, and there should be no doubt that Stratasec seems worthy of a detailed investigation. After 9-11, the Securities and Exchange Commission recommended that Stratasec be investigated for insider trading related to the crimes of that day. Oddly enough, the FBI and SEC never followed through with the investigation, claiming it was unnecessary because the officers of Stratasec had no ties to terrorism or other negative information. That assessment does not appear to be valid for many reasons, including that the Carlyle Group was financed in part by Osama bin Laden's family, and that Stratasec director James Abrahamson was the business partner of Mansour Ijaz, who claimed on several occasions to be able to contact Osama bin Laden at will. Maybe the investigation didn't happen because no one wanted to embarrass the president, who was busy making tremendous political and personal profit from 9-11, and whose family was deeply connected to the Carlyle Group, whose brother was a Stratasec director. Ultimately, though, we know that Stratasec was a security contractor for several of the facilities that were compromised on 9-11, including the World Trade Center buildings, Dulles Airport, where Flight 77 took off from, and also United Airlines, which owned two of the ill-fated planes. We also know that the CEO of Stratasec came from a background of deep state-connected, opium-funded wealth. 
Hopefully this information brings us one step closer to justice for everyone who died on 9-11. May they rest in peace.